Hello everybody and welcome to another PMP end of month review. What is this? Why? This is where we go through the end of month submissions in the PMP event. And this month's event theme is monsters. Uh, if you're interested in joining the PMP, we welcome you into our positive hobby focused group. We welcome anybody from beginners to master painters. Every month we invite people to submit one and no more than one submission into this event. I then review it here quickly, uh, talk about where they can improve. Um, I do ask that you write me a short, short, short is the key note about what you're looking to improve on. I don't need a novelization of what led you to buy the miniature or, or, or paint the miniature or anything like that. Just what you're going for and where you want to have the feedback on. Uh, so, link is down below. We'd love to have you. Remember, if you do click the link to join, you have to answer all three questions. If for some reason you don't answer all three questions, you will not get in the group. It's more or less that simple. So, with that, we're going to jump right in. Here we go. So, uh, sorry, I didn't realize my light was in frame there. Uh, so, uh, let's start off with uh, Alex, who brings us this big uh, Tyranid. Uh, he says, uh, first Forge World model, he'd like some general advice and feedback. Sure. Uh, so it's, this is a big boy. He's, uh, interesting. I like the color contrast you've chosen. It's, it's nice. Uh, part of, I think, what just jumps out at me is some of the black parts of the carapace here could probably use a little more definition, uh, in some areas of light grays. Um, the purple to, to brighter transition here feels a little rough in some places. My guess is that's Forge World skin syndrome. Um, probably the fault as much of the the um, the resin that they use. It tends to be not very good. And Forge World skin is a thing. It has this sort of roughness to it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, overall, I like your color choices. I'd say just probably smoothing out some of those blends and areas on the skin, better defining those pieces so they stand apart better from the things next to them. On the glowy bits, um, the camera's sort of blowing it out just a little, so it's hard to tell. But again, maybe a little smoothness of that, like I can see roughness in here and in here. That might be the paint that we're choosing, something like that. Um, one thing I did notice, this is just a small note for you. Um, avoid these like alien tufts if they're in a different color than anything else on your miniature. They're very intense pink. They're more saturated than anything else up here. If you had brought the claw tips up to the same saturated pink, these would be a great choice. But without, with everything on your miniature is extremely desaturated. That is to say, it has a high tint. Uh, so that's going to be a problem for you because now my eye is only drawn to the base and these five little strange alien tufts. I like these color tufts too. They're super fun, but they can be distracting if they're not used carefully. Okay, next up, we've got Austin, um, Plague Angel from Creature Caster. What would he do to take this up a notch? Yeah, so super cool. Um, like the blood and the, the little goop and guts. Um, I mean, my answer here is going to be a pretty common one throughout this, but it's a lot of basically pushing the contrast. The wings themselves feel especially flat. Basically, they feel sort of dry brush to pull out the texture, but there's no actual structuring of the wing there itself. The staff is another example of something that could use a lot more attention. It's a focal point. It's his weapon, and yet there's not any micro texturing on it. There's not a lot of contrast. It's just sort of this dark thing with the occasional light spots that don't really seem to have, you know, a great deal of sensibility as to what go, what's going on. So more definition of the individual elements would be uh, would be good. Uh, you know, bringing out some of these muscle structures, things like that, really separating it out. I believe that Sam Lenz did a version of this uh, a few years back. You could go check his out. It's a great guide on how to really bring a lot of visual interest to this model. Really pay attention to what he did with the wings, what he did with the um, uh, the sickle and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of different ones that have been done from, from great painters. So that's always sort of a guide for me. I start by just looking at other people's work and say, you know, what are the areas of the model they chose to express and how should that influence my take on it. But yeah, the wings, the definition of the skin, and the contrast is sort of my areas of feedback I would give you. Okay, next up, Stu with a beholder. Experiment with OSL, nothing too serious, but it took a long while. Anyway, I could push this. Yeah, so the so here we have the traditional OSL problem. I'm going to make a video sometime called Five Things You Just Shouldn't Do in Miniature Painting Unless You Know You Can Do It. One of them would be OSL. And I don't mean that in any insulting way. It's good to push yourself. It's good to try new things. I really do appreciate that. The issue here is we don't have any light to dark separation. Like everything is being caught in this color. So assumingly he's just in a complete blackness and he's the only source of light. 
The problem is that would be casting these really, really strong, deep shadows. You can't strike a light that's going to actually cause this amount of vibrancy without creating really deep shadows. So like these colors would be interacting in lots of different ways. And so having then a complicated OSL that's got like multiple shooting in various directions, it just looks like he's a purple beholder. When I first looked at this, he read as a purple beholder with green lights, right? But then I was like, well, where's the shadows that the green lights are casting? Well, then they're not present because, <clears throat> because effectively you've got the purple light right next to the green light right next to that. That's going to create just a sort of mishmash lighting situation that's very hard to read. Um, because there's no shadows that separate the two areas. And that's ultimately what you want. When you create a really bright light, okay, notice the shadows that get put under my hand are much stronger, right? Like, you see that? See right here, right? Okay, if I pull that away, see how dark the top of my fingers are up here? All right. Like, when you make light, you're making shadow. And so OSL is as much about painting the shadows and the, the light that's not there as it is about painting the light that is there. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my take on them. Um, it's just, there's so many light sources, it's kind of hard to read. My advice if you're just learning OSL is like, you you tried to like, you stepped up to the plate and tried to like hit a grand slam. Yeah, and you were saying, I'm gonna hit it out of the park. Find a miniature that has like a torch or a magic flame or something like that in their hands and keep it simple and straightforward with that. Right? That'll let you understand the way the light is casting and sort of the, the cast glow. Remember, the number one key with OSL is the light cast can never be as bright and intense or saturated as the light itself. Um, the light on your wall is not as bright as the light from the light bulb. This is the same thing. This green is just as bright and intense, the same with this purple, as the light sources themselves. That's another thing that makes it read as not OSL. You have to have the light source itself being the most bright, vibrant thing, and then it's casting a softer, lighter, less intense version of that light. Okay, next up, Peter um, Kraken Eater. Uh, all right, so uh, yeah, that's a great model. Uh, you did a really nice job with him. He looks great. Uh, fun use of the colors, uh, really in theme, you know, very oceany colors, great base, uh, nice textures over things. Yeah, I mean, he looks really good. My biggest area of feedback for you would be if, you know, I was going to say, here's one thing you would work, I would work on, I would continue to push the skin. Um, the skin feels like it could use a little more vibrancy, probably a little more tonal and very vari tonal variation, so variation of hue and variation of color. Um, more reds, pinks, purples, stuff like that. Um, creature the size you assume he's he's big, he's going to have lots of scuffs and scrapes and colors and things like that around on his skin. I have a lot of color in my skin. Look at the reds and blues and purples that I have in the lighting situation on my skin right now. Or you know, make a fist with your hand real tight and watch all of the the blood you know, pump in there, look at all those pinks and stuff that are in your hand, right? So that kind of stuff is what you want to bring forward into the into the miniature. But overall, it's a super clean paint job. He looks really nice. It's very striking. It's very bright. I really like it. For the size of this thing, you did an absolutely banger job. This is really well done. Great stuff. Okay, next up, Daniel. I'd like to have some feedback on how I could have improved the contrast in the eye stalks in particular. Um, sure. I mean, contrast on these kinds of soft miniatures is tough because he is a pretty soft miniature. Like He doesn't have a lot of um, really well sculpted detail. But the answer is we've got to create it. So each of his little bumps need to go in and we've got to pick out little highlights and stuff like that on them, create directional shapings to the to the lines, you know, whether it be through edges or texture or something like that. On his eye stalks, we have to have darker areas, maybe toward the base of the tentacle and getting toward lighter areas of skin up here. Right, where it's getting into a more, maybe we move this into a lighter color up toward the top, and then it gets quite light here, and there's a nice dark ring around the eyeball, and then the eyeball itself stands out as quite bright when you've got the white with the little irises in the middle. Those kinds of things. What you want to think about is your progression of light, dark, light, dark. You went for sort of a total volumetric, that is to say the top of the beholder is light, the bottom of the beholder is dark, and that's fine. But then we've got to, each element has to have its own concepts of light and shadow as well. Um, the thing that actually sticks out to me quite a bit is not having the right level of contrast is something like the teeth, um, because the teeth are all very evenly, equally done. They don't have the, you know, there's no striation to them or more plaque buildup or color difference in the, the teeth that are more recessed as opposed to the teeth that are up front. And it seems like the light is coming from directly on and above. So those front teeth would be a little more reflective, a little more white, a little more shiny. Um, so those kinds of things are what I would uh, recommend you toward.
Hopefully that helps, Daniel. Okay, next up, uh, Demogorgon. I'm not going to open this up so it doesn't uh, go all big and stuff, but I'll let it replay. Um, so, yeah, basic issue here is much like what I was saying. There's just not enough contrast, not enough separation of the elements. Cool miniature, but he reads as basically yellow ochre. Like, he just is that color. Um, we've got bones and stuff like that on the base, and yet those don't really tend to be sticking out as white compared to the dirt around them. We have the model, and basically, other than the teeth, there's not a lot of color variation there. So you want to think, how can I work stuff in? How can I make the mane a different color? You know, things like that. Um, if I come over here and I do Demogorgon, is that how you spell him? Sure, let's do that. Demogorgon. Uh, am I going to get just Stranger Things stuff? I'm going to get Stranger Things stuff. Okay, let's try D&D. &D. There we go. There he is. All right. So, you know, if we just look at the artwork, right, which is always a good place to start. Here, let me move my head out of the way here real quick. Oops. There we go. We'll move me. Right? Notice how this person has worked in oranges and blacks, like really deep blacks to contrast. There's bright yellows around his face, right? There's, there's a lot of... And this is, you know, 2D art. But notice how much different color is going on here. It's all in the same basic area. But this artist has chosen to represent this in a lot of different colors with these bright yellows, these oranges, and so on and so forth, right? Um, and as you go along, there's lots of different takes on Demogorgon and kind of what he looks like. You know, look at that art, right? And get these concepts of where these things can be broken out. Notice how even on something where he's all in this fur, right, there's still coloration differences in the fur. So his fur has patterns and stripings and stuff like that. Um, it's got, you know, the lizard scales have uh, a lot of strong definition to them, so on and so forth, right? So it's our job to create that, that kind of contrast that can't often be done, uh, you know, uh, even when you've got similar textures, you still need to stretch it out right here. Even when he's mostly orange, we've got his bright sort of blue baboon face and red tentacles, and we've got, again, patterns in the fur, you know, whatever, right? The point is, is that you want to use uh those things those tools at your disposal to create that visual interest so there you go hope that helps all right mawe uh just tried a color scheme for the tyranids uh yeah so it's got a big giant problem and it is this red okay um the issue is you have a big red uh uh thing that shouldn't be here so you're fine. Purple, yellow, and blue is a perfectly fine uh, color scheme, okay? Uh, and it, it works fine, okay? Um, but you, you can't, like, adding that fourth color of that red right there at his head doesn't do you any favors. It's very distracting. So color composition wise, get rid of that, stick to the yellow ochre. You've got a perfectly fine scheme. That's my answer. It's pretty much that easy. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, Eric with a mimic chest, some feedback on the non-metallic metal contrast and color choices. And if gloss varnish should look good on the tongue. Uh, uh, no, I don't care. You had your hands in the shot. Um, this is great, man. This is really great. Love the color of the flesh here. Um, no, I would definitely not gloss varnish the, the tongue. You, So let's explain what the point of gloss varnish is. Gloss varnish, I mean, it's a protective layer of one thing, but it, it's very smooth, and so it reflects light. All the, the difference between the different types of varnishes is just the sort of way that they settle, and do they create a rough texture at the micro level when they're done or a smooth texture at the micro level when they're done? Matte is just very rough, hence it diffuses light. Light bounces in all sorts of different directions. You don't get a single reflection. Gloss is like my forehead. It's really shiny and, and smooth, and so it reflects light very brightly. You've already painted in highlights. If you put gloss all this all over this, you're going to get reflections where you have painted shadows. You do not gloss things that are painted. That's why most people want things to be extremely matte, because if you've already placed the highlights, you don't want to then add gloss. Now, as to the non-metallic metal, it's nice. It's got some good reflections. Um, your your jump to white is a bit precipitous in many cases here. Like, we have these hard lines. It needs to be smoothed out. You need to bring glazes to that to kind of, like, the line needs to be not so, like, blue, 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 white. Blue, 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 right? Like, you, you got to soften those transitions. But overall, it's a super cool-looking job. Like, you've got 
Um, the concept down here, certainly, of the edges and your placement looks completely reasonable. The light line going across the top is great visually. It draws attention to the big center eyeball. So all that's just fine. Like, your placement's good. You just need to smooth out some of the transitions. Really, really cool piece. Okay, next up. So, Brian, uh, first time posting for review. Started painting this January a lot to learn. Uh, this guy is from the Carnomorphs expansion. Please how it turned out creating contrast in those domains supposed to be covered in blood. Um, yeah, sure. So, I mean, I have a video on this of uh, how to paint um, sort of muscle texture. I, like I, so I fairly recent-ish video. So go back and take a look at that. The issue here is we still don't have value contrast. So you you did all this work with all the muscles, but you didn't create any value contrast. And what I mean is this muscle structure here is highlighted in the same way as this muscle structure in here that's hidden or this stuff on the inside of his leg, right? So what you've got to do is you've still got to, through the striations and work that you're doing on muscle texture, you've still got to pay attention to volumetric highlighting. Your texturing here on the muscling and stuff is really nice, but it's he still has to, he still has overall volumes. He himself has more light at the top than at the bottom. There'll be more light on every muscle group than there are at the bottom. It's no different than when it's skin, right? And I see you pushed it a little here. It looks like on, on this shoulder, it looks like that maybe there's a little highlight here. Um, I think you need to take that farther, like towards the bottom of the knee, the ends of these, like there should be areas where his muscles are sort of glistening and that's kind of brought out by you tracing the lines in that brighter white. That's how we sort of fake that glisten effect. The bones themselves also fall a victim to this to some degree, um, being sort of very kind of flat, honestly. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. Okay, next up, uh, Xmill, uh, never been a, so let's see. Uh, okay, so, and you just wanted to, some general feedback, which blood do you like more, blood uh, for the blood god, Technol and Ogres versus Spirit Stone Red? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, these are fun models. Um, I think you want to smooth out some of your transitions between sort of the wash that you use that you layered over. You want to be careful with that. You get this sort of tide staining effect in unnatural places um, and all these. So you want to make sure you're kind of smoothing those back down. Um, and then over here, uh, with the very rusty, uh, sort of armor, you want to have it more texture to it. If it's this heavily rusted, so more stippling, more stuff like that. Uh, now as to which one I like better, um, it doesn't really matter. You can use either. It's more about the application of it. I have several videos on blood application. And so like the key is it shouldn't just be, uh, like with this guy, it shouldn't just be this red on here. Like it wouldn't show that bright red everywhere. There'd be variation to it. Blood oxidizes within sort of a few minutes of its exposure to air. Um, so you want that there's sort of different color variations you're going to want to achieve there. So if you look at my video on blood spatter, I cover a lot of that in detail, but both can be fine. It's just about how you use them. All right, Lucas, uh, best painted death guard model. They use quite simple techniques for it. Happy with the end result. What can be done to make it better? Sure. So big old, great unclean one here. And yet again, the answer is going to be much the same. We've had it is tonal variation. We need more contrast across the demon. Um, we're really going to see it in one of these shots here. There we go. This is the one I want because this is such a, an easy shot to show kind of the, the nature of muscle structure. The, this guy is a big fat blob. I mean, that's what makes him cool. But, and, and I like the, the way you have the holes in the skin and the muscles and stuff like that. And his little boobos, those all look good. Well picked out a plus, like I have no issue with any of that. I'm super fine with it. Um, I'd love to see a little more texturing on his butt flap. Um, but you know, that's a minor thing. The biggest issue I have is he's sort of the same green all over, like this green up top, which is very flat and very exposed to the light that's theoretically above, is basically the same green as this down here that is very not. Um, so drawing something like purple into your green shadows can be a great way to create a naturalistic shadow. You can also use red to make it feel a little, little bit more natural, a little bit more earthy. Um, you can use browns, similar tone. It'll make it feel more actual nature-y. Um, maybe these aren't the things you want to go with. So like something like purple can make it feel rotten, um, and sort of dark in, in your, in your shadows, but we need to respect that volumetric highlighting, right? Bringing those shadows down into the lower areas on this guy, um, where he wouldn't be catching the light. So yeah, that's my sort of main piece of feedback. Overall, it looks great. Um, on the sword rust, I would vary it a little more. You kind of have just these speckles and spots everywhere around where there was chips and then it goes to gray, you want to work in browns, light browns, red rusts, orange rusts. Like rust is a very complicated thing. So you want to do more than just kind of stipple that around. It should be, uh, it should have a little bit more color to it. All right, next up, Zachary. Uh, 
This thing is painted almost entirely contrast and pale bone. Uh, metallics on the right or any feedback is appreciated. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a this is a great example of how you can use contrast to fantastic effect because he looks really nice. Um, again, the uh, the biggest challenge I see is with uh, just sort of the individual uh, variation of value, uh, not hue. I like you introducing sort of the yellows and stuff like that into him, so that looks good. Um, but, you know, again, a little more color uh, could have done well in some places like the wings, where we maybe bring a little more tones, more red, stuff like that into the shadows, a little more purples into the shadows. But I also need to see more expression of value. That can be tough when you're using things like contrast, but uh, one of the great ways to do it is just to apply more into the shadows. So they would like pick darker versions of the color and, and work those in there um, into those kind of darker areas uh, down sort of underneath his jowls, under the, the underneath his, his neck there. Those kinds of areas should be cast in deeper shadow and I'd love to see those expressed more uh, so that it was easier to understand and kind of read. But overall, very fun. He's a great uh, conversion. I know obviously you clearly reposed him in a lot of ways to, to get this uh, going. So I think that's super fun. And uh, yeah, hope that helps, Zach. Really nice. All right, our first of a couple Kragnoses. Uh, so this is, uh, he did this entirely in oils from start to finish. Uh, I'd like to compete at some point in the future. Can you give me an idea of where I'm at the moment need to work on? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a, it depends on what kind of competitions you're talking about is, is my answer. Like you, there's, you know, high-end competitions require really high-end painting. So where do we need to go from here? Well, we need to, so you, you said you worked in oils. I mean, my first answer is never work just in a new medium or only one medium for, for any project, like for competition. Um, work in the medium that is appropriate for that space. I'll often mix oils, acrylics, you know, airbrush, enamel, anything. I'll use anything I, I need to if it's the right thing for that. The other answer is we need to have more controlled use of contrast. I like the skin variation, but it's not universal. So like we have the light and the lighter tones here, but there's none on the top of his arm. This area isn't lit here. His fingers, his knuckles, these kinds of details make a big difference. Um, his eyes are just flat turquoise holes. I, I need eyes. I need expression. I need life there. Pupils, irises, light dots. The uh, horns need to be a lot smoother. I need the individual lines and stuff picked out of each individual horn with controlled contrast in between there. Um, I need the fur itself to have more of a texture to it. So that is to say thin lines showing the striation, but this is really expressive on the tail, by the way. You can really see that it. it looks quite monochrome. Um, the front is better, but the tail is very monochrome. But even with these, I'd want to see more thin striations to make it look more like Pantene Pro V Beautiful or whatever. Um, the individual, don't, don't sleep on small elements. Competitions thrive on small elements. Fingernails, teeth, having more contrast to them. His face and the facial expressions and the color and the tone worked into his face. These little strappy things here, this is just red. You just did this red. We just phoned this part in, right? And like, I, if I was a judge, I would notice that immediately. I did, I, I noticed it five seconds into looking at this, right? Somebody else is going to go in and pick out these details, create value separation between them, show me what the material is, is made of, right? Uh, these are the kind of things that set you apart in a competition and make things really stand out. Um, you have to make the piece your own in a big way, right? And a part of that means finding that home of expression and how you really create that light. Like here, the tail just feels like it was, you know, you got this dark and then we did the orange on top of it. But that's not how it would be. Some of the this upturned stuff, the recesses are still upturned toward the light. So they'd be darker, but they'd be a darker version of the highlight color. Whereas the ones directly in shadow, this down here wouldn't be the same orange as this. It would be a deeper tone, right? That kind of stuff is what you have to think of. You have to think about the, the volumetric highlights of the whole thing and really bring that, that lighting scheme to life. So I hope that didn't sound harsh, but if you want, you know, that's kind of where it's at. Now, if you're talking about some local competition that's, you know, like a game store or something, sure, you're, you're getting toward the right place. But the higher you go uh, in competition, the more you have to be able to express those kinds of things. So hope that all helps. All right, next up, Steve, uh, just looking for some general feedback. Tabletop but, uh, quality, but eye-catching. Um, it's contrast. It's all in the contrast. That's literally my one piece of advice for you. I, I hate to say it so much during this, but it's but it's the number one thing I see in people uh, and, the, and the, the things that get submitted to me. Like, this bone is flat. The face is flat. The fur is flat. This armor is flat. The hair is flat. Like, that's as simple as I can make it. 
your color composition is fine. It's quite interesting, actually. I like the sort of pink, peachy, orange uh, on the hair, uh, along with this sort of blue-gray. I think that's a really interesting choice that works very well. So you have a good eye for color, okay? But again, we have to like light, you know, darkness in between the individual braids. We're not even going to get into like texturing and stuff like that that we could do to really, really go up because you said this is going to be tabletop. That's fine, but I do still need some kind of contrast on the horns to show me a transition, some kind of contrast on the fur, you know, lighter on the bottom or lighter on the top, darker on the bottom, that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, having things like the toenails picked out, you know, all the details filled in, that kind of stuff is, is what I would say. So that's my main feedback for you. Hope that helps. Uh, Alec, general feedback on this bust I did for a competition. Oh, this is really great. This is really great. Alec, I saw this. I really love this. This is Spira, Spira's uh, ball bust. I don't remember what the actual name of it is, but yeah, beautiful bust. Um, super fun. Um, the I think you did a fantastic job with it. Love the contrast of uh, the, the ball here in the uh, green, blue, yellow uh, against the yellow, orange, red of the writer. Um, the nature of your unified lighting scheme, him being an extremely yellow light, just reads so very well. Uh, so I think that's really wonderful. I love the cast shadow here on the little guy. You captured that really well where only sort of that side of his face is lit. Um, and then we come over here and clearly we have a more purple slash blue light on this side. It feels like it should be maybe a little bit dimmer in the dim parts and the shadows. What I mean by that is like, I would love to see some of the things that would be deeper in shadow over here actually have those deeper shadows. That's the, the sort of thing that jumped out at me. And then I noticed here on his hand, it felt a little rough, um, kind of how it all came together. It didn't feel as smooth as maybe you would expect. Like the value jumps are a little too high on the hand. Like this red spot here is really getting me because I don't know what's creating that. Like certainly there's a, you can, I, I get the red line here, but it's a bit deeper, darker, and of a lower tone than I would have expected. Um, so like that one feels like it should be softened or the transition should be softened a little. I don't mind it as much up here at the wrist because of the nature of his little thin bones, his little bones. Um, but, but that part, that one jumped out at me, but overall is really good. I, the final thing I'll say is I really love how you caught the light catch in his eye as he's clearly looking toward whatever this light source is that's creating this very yellow light. I think you did a really masterful job. Um, without that light catch, you would look like your brain wouldn't even comprehend it, but you would, it would break your immersion, but you did catch it and you put it there. And I think it really, really sells the overall lighting scheme. So yeah, cool stuff, man. This is great. Great use of this, uh, this bust. Well done. All right, next up, uh, Tenku. Uh, so he said the base is blank and uh, tips how to do how to highlight black flowing hair properly. Um, sure. All right. So I have a video on this on doing black hair. So my first advice is go watch the video. My second advice is yes, this thing needs more contrast. Um, well, on the leathers and stuff, go back and watch my leather texture video because it's the you you got kind of the right direction, but you're not capturing it all. Now these board game managers are all really soft, and I don't ever love them. I, I don't paint board game managers intentionally because I think they're just generally not great sculpts. Um, but that's not your fault. That's just, you have to fight through that. Unfortunately, um, a bad sculpt can, can just, you know, be hard to paint. Um, the, uh, now as to how to highlight black. Sure. I mean, you have to highlight it up to white. That's the key, but in a very small volume, 50% of the surface should still be black. Okay. But, uh, let's just look over here and say, uh, woman with long black hair. Okay, cool. All right, so images, All right? So when you look at something like this, look at how much of that isn't black, right? Like when you really look at this in a bright light situation, look at how little of that hair is actually black, right? Um, because it's catching these big reflections that are pushing it into gray but your eyes resolve it to be black. So if 50%, like, again, this is one of those things where, like, how to do it is to make it look like it really looks in nature. Um, there's a th million, million, million images out there, right? And the real world is always your best reference. So you have short volumes that come to a very bright light. Um, as I've said a hundred times, that the way to do this is you go look at your Pantene Pro-V hair dye bottles, because those are Photoshopped to be, like, light perfect. And so they're actually a really great reference because they're real people, but they've been digitally manipulated 
to be like in a perfect lighting situation. So they will they will show you the sort of perfect light of how it should look. So the point is is that like it has to be these. You're, it's mostly black, fifty percent of the surface, and then it shrinks to be just like to gray, to gray, to gray, thin white highlights striking across the surface. Hope that helps. All right, Jason. Uh, hopefully, this counts the monster. I mean, yeah, he, he the mega boss on Mark Crusher most certainly does. Um, just curious if you think this could win a painting contest. General question: presence of composition if it was executed properly. Um, I don't know squat about warmers, and no lore applies here. Well, no lore applies ever to me. I don't believe in lore and think it is all silly. It is your hobby. You do what you want. Um, well, what I'll say is he's certainly eye-catching. You have no issues there. One of the challenges here is he's probably so bright, he's kind of hard to read. Like, this is really intense um, as far as, like, all the hyper-bright colors you've used. Uh, could it win a painting competition? Uh, maybe. It depends on the, the, the competition, of course, as always. What I'll say is there's a lot of roughness to the paint, and, and maybe that's what you're going for. Um, but, like, he's so bright and so intense, it's actually hard for your eyes to resolve. Now, I understand you probably wanted him to be this kind of, like, really bright, intense guy um, with all the bright blues, but I would have done things like taken the wing folds here and de-blued them because it's just like it's so much intense blue blue is a really intense color for our eyes to resolve especially when it's way up in this this part of the value spectrum and i would have still controlled for some of the lighting like part of the problem is you have no volumetric lighting in here whatsoever because it's in more of a cartoon style which is fine um you know my real answer of could it win a competition is how much does the competition allow for this sort of like more cartoon style painting that's not a judgment by the way that's just like the i don't know how else to say it comic book style i guess i i have absolutely zero negative judgment on that it's just a nature of a thing so but because there's no volumetric lighting here like the light on the top of his armor is the same as the stuff on the bottom of his armor and it's all resolving at the exact same intensity across the miniature it makes it very hard to read right and there's just not a lot of actual contrast like you the orange and blue are really all that resolves from this distance. Like, I lose the orc because he's not value different enough from the blue around him, and everything else is so intense. I can see the orange. That resolves really easy. Like, looking at this thing from a distance, right, it's just a big blue, orange. Like, that's what I resolve, right? Like, things like the teeth, his eyes, the other individual elements don't really stand out because they aren't sort of resolved enough. Right here's sort of a, a, a you know midway through something I'm working on that's similar, right? And you know he's you can see how he's much more green and stuff like that. That's not going to show up at all. So it's a bad reference. I happen to be working on the same model, but um, like mine's in much more naturalistic colors, which isn't at all the point. The point is just that the individual elements, because the, the skin is muted, then the things like the bones stick out more. When everything's bright, nothing's bright. So that's the challenge. So uh, overall, I think one of the ways you could do it would be to introduce a little bit more neutrality into this scheme um, to kind of bring things in line. The one part that really doesn't work for me is whatever's going on with the skull and the little uh, this thing on the back of the mega boss. I don't know what material this is all supposed to be or why it is this color that's the only part that my brain couldn't resolve and i was like why is this yellow so there you go all right uh michael i'm just gonna say michael that's probably wrong uh awesome general opinion about this bus light if colors work contrast so do the colors work yes the green yellow and pink is a perfectly fine thing um, that's no issues at all there. You're, you're good. Um, now what's the, you know, on a bust, especially something in this scale, it's really big. We've got to go busts are you work until you're almost insane. And then you do twice as much after that. That's the key to busts. I've said it a lot. I'll say it again. Um, so like the point being is that we don't have enough texture stippling things happening around the skin to separate it out. Um, the, the, the bust itself doesn't have a huge amount going on. But it also doesn't have enough contrast and value jumps and little tiny touches like around his eyes, seeing different tones, the, the, the variation of hue, as well as the variation of value. So we need more value variation as well as like texturing, stippling, things we'd expect to find on skin of a weird alien monster. I like that you picked out some of the stuff like the, um, 
you know, his little veins and stuff, but they're, they're a bit too strong. You need to like green those over so they feel more subtle and then have other things like spots or, or texture or something like that on the skin. The leather knapsack thing he's wearing feels really, really, really boring. Um, that needs a lot more attention, a lot more contrast, a lot more texturing, stuff like that. Like with busts, you have to push yourself because the scale is blown up so big that you would now see all that detail. Those minor shifts in hue, in value, and in texture would become very visible and so you've got to bring all those to life. So there you go. Hope that helps. All right, next Kragnos. Uh, looking what could be done as the next step. The model's a little flat. I do not have an airbrush. Um, yes, you said I think there could be more contrast in the skin. If you think something, you're definitely right. <laughs> okay? When it comes to, like, if you think something is wrong with your miniature, then you're right. So when it comes to this guy, like, yes, he's just way too flat. So more variation of tone and value uh, or sorry of, of hue and value throughout the piece um, we need more colors worked into that skin reds pinks things like that we need more maybe purples down in the shadows we need more high highlights soft uh deeper greens things like that more texture and things like that brought out into all especially like the horns and those kinds of elements more more attention to volumetric value highlighting all of those kinds of areas are what i would uh recommend um, I would also look at what's going to, what are we going to do with the gold? Are we going to leave all of his metals really new? Do we want to maybe darken some of those? Again, the true metallics just look like they've been kind of applied and they're just there, right? So even if you're not going to, to weather them or something, I would still recommend taking them, applying some shade and, you know, gaining back control of the light so that something interesting is going on there. Treating your true metallic metal like non-metallic metal, another thing I have many videos on, so check those out. All right, next up, Ray, Rye. Rye? I don't know. Uh, Lumineth, Spirit of the Mountain. Uh, as fast as he could while still aiming for a higher quality. Any advice on what I could do to further improve while increasing overall painting time minim minimally? Minimally. 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 Okay. Sure. Um, the stone. The number one thing that jumps out to me is the stone. This mountain pieces. Love the green worked in. Good. Yes. Love it. Um, but it doesn't have as much texture and highlight as I would think. Maybe a little bit of reds into the stone for some value, or sorry, for some hue variation. And then a little bit of stippling, very light stippling with almost all the paint off your brush, a small round brush to create a little more spot texture on the stone to make it feel more rough, uh, things like that. You could do that in literally a matter of seconds and it would be a huge add. The other thing I would say is some variation of value in the horns and the staff both of which are flat black and flat brown. Um, so whether it was tracing a few thin lines down those or working a slightly lighter color out toward the edge or something like that, um, just any kind of value change on those horns and that staff stick would be probably a huge upgrade. So yeah, there you go. Hope that helps. All right, next up, Alan. Um, did a dank hold trog boss for his Gits army. First time painting such a large model. This is another thing we're going to look at multiples of. Uh, would love some feedback on the skin and blending overall. Yeah, so the skin looks good. I like the green and pink. It's a solid combination, teal and pink. I'm in for it. Um, it does need to have more contrast. Uh, we need more light, more dark. I think the pink to green transitions actually look really nice. I think you did a good job there for in most places, making them feel pretty naturalistic in their transition. So on that blending, for the most part, I'm a buyer. There's a couple rough spots in here and in here and stuff like that. But really, for the most part, he looks quite nice. Uh, so I think he did a great job there bringing those two together into these areas. This one's a little rough, but around the arm and stuff right here, really nice. Great stuff. Either you ended it on a muscle or you transitioned it really well into shadow and things like that. The contrast on the stuff growing on his back feels quite flat. So definitely more variation there as to exactly what's going on. Same with the bug and the club. Um, so overall, I like the skin. Good variation of hue for sure. Not a piece of feedback I'm going to give you. You have the appropriate variation of hue. Now we probably need to bring in some more contrast of value. And then also uh, the same, bring a little more visual interest into these other elements of the piece, these ancillary elements that aren't basically the main troll himself, his sort of back stalag growth, uh, his club and his bug friend. Okay. All right. Next up, Travis tried to make a rotting Promethean for my vampire army. Really happy with the kit bash inspired by Pete, the mini painter. Oh, yeah, sure. 
I've done lots of dry brush and colors to make it look worn, but I'm not getting exactly what I'm looking for feedback on how to make the ship would look a little older and the chit and look also older going for a Dungeness Crab orange, but still dead. Thanks for the feedback. Sure. So, I mean, the crab itself needs, yeah, it needs more variation of, of, of value. That's number one. It doesn't have nearly any, and then variation of color. So, you know, let's look up uh, giant crabs. So, giant crab. All right. So, when I look at big giant crabs here, like this is obviously a very different color than what you're going for, but it's very similar. Let's look at this guy. Here we go. All right. See all that variation, spotting, natural coloration, like this, you know, crustaceans generally have really interesting sort of color schemes. Uh, they tend to have a lot of this, you know, really interesting stuff going on. And I think you want to try to bring that to the fore. It's not just sort of orange. Now, how do you make him look dead? You know, you can introduce things like more grays and purples into the skin and stuff like that. That'll make it feel... Uh, dead, because those are sort of what gray and purple are what we sort of universally resolve in our mind as being something that's dead. So that's a way to help there. Now, with the wood, it's much the same story. I've actually made that boat, uh, I've used the heck out of that boat for lots of basing and stuff like that and to make it look old. I have a ghost ship version. Go back in my uh, Twitter or, or Insta, uh, hit the gram up and find me, and uh, you'll, you'll find I have a version of an old boat like this in uh, moonlight with a vampire lady standing on top of it. And the key with it is you, uh, you have to introduce grays into the wood. Old wood goes gray. Um, so that's how you make Then You have to do that through tracing those thin lines and striations on there, and that will make it feel older. So there you go. Hope that helps. All right, next up, Kelsey, uh, looking for feedback on my Resin Beast. Made the top 10 and one staff pick. Any advice would have uh, might have helped push me into the top three? Yeah, so Kelsey, so I was one of the judges for Resin Beast, so I can give you very direct feedback on what I saw when I looked at this. And what I'll say is that I really did love your piece here. I thought it was fantastic. We're going to zoom in here what we can because I think this did, oh, I think you did a really wonderful job. This was one of my absolute favorites. I will tell you right now that, that like, you just got edged out. Um, in my mind, I thought you were really, really strong on a lot of different elements uh, here. Um, there were, you know, three pieces slightly stronger than you, mainly because they did some more interesting things with lighting or texturing or patterning or coloration. They just kind of told a more interesting story through the paint. But yours was really strong. The magenta undertones here and things like that, I caught that immediately. Really love you using the, the magenta for the shadows. That's really nice. One of the things I didn't see quite as much of was sort of micro-texturing. Um, so this is uh, John Ninas also did in Emperor Dragon, and his had a lot of like micro-texturing into the scales. Um, whereas you have some really nice highlights, and you're certainly paying attention to the volumes. But I didn't see that micro detail that that he had that really pushed his sort of up a level. Same thing with things like the horns. Like I like you resolving them quite dark. Uh, I have no like love the introduction of the orange, but again some slight micro texturing, very thin lines and visual interest. That stuff is you know is noticed and then it really shines out. Um, those were kind of some of the stuff. The wings themselves. Let's, let's scan up here to the wings. You did such a beautiful job of of rendering these. But again, they're rendered in the broad sense, but then I does, it doesn't have the sort of micro detailing. There's a lot of texture here that I would have loved to see you, like this, this part of the wing is where it really shines, but it's, it's up here as well. I would have really loved to see you resolve some of these with just very faint uh, uh, sort of uses of that magenta as well. Like it's a really thin filter into those little cracks and crevices and things like that same with these little horns on the edge of the wings again same stuff like maybe some striation or some texturing or something like that that would have drawn that out this was a very very strong piece kelsey i do hope you come back and enter again next year um i would love to look at more of what you do i think you should be extremely proud of this that staff pick really does mean something uh this was a beautifully resolved piece you had a wonderful color choice uh, you know, this is the, it's always the challenge of top three competitions. You can, you can paint your heart out and paint something truly amazing, which you did. You absolutely did. There just happened to be three people whose picks were, or whose pieces were slightly better than yours. 
but that's the nature of top threes, right? So please don't take that as a negative judgment. You did absolutely wonderful, and uh, I really thank you for, for sharing this with us. It's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, next up, Jasper. Uh, first time that we got another big old troll here. Uh, gave the skulls in his necklace more swampy looks that fit in the color tone. The rest of the green didn't conflict with the face and belly. Feel the next step of skin would bring more textures and details. What should we start? Yeah, so, well, this is kind of like a pretty terrible picture. So let's start there. We got we to take a picture without this kind of direct lighting. But yes, we need more value contrast more than anything else. Like his skin is very flat. Um, I like the variation of hue. You're trying to work in reds and purples, which is good. Um, but we need to like separate the elements. These ropes need to be done. These things need to be picked out. Um, the, I don't mind the bones having that sort of green color to them, but at the same time, they still need value contrast on them to, to separate them out. Same with the club, same with the stuff on his back should be set aside in some kind of different thing. The mushroom should have more texturing. So yes, you're partially right. I don't actually think skin texturing is your next stop. I think skin variation of value is your next stop. There's a lot of flatness in the skin. Uh, like there's hue is good, but if I shifted this into like a value spectrum, I really wouldn't see the, the, the variation I want. Um, when you take pictures in the future, please try to do it through indirect lighting. Like, you see, if I can see this kind of cast shadow, your lighting is too direct, too strong. Also, don't do this, whatever whatever this is. I don't know what this is, but don't do this. Um, you definitely don't want to do this. Just get some soft indirect lights. I have a video on taking photos. Games Workshop has a great article linked to their main community page on how to take photos. Go read that. Okay. But yeah, there you go. That's my advice. Good stuff. Sebastian, uh, okay, he said this is the this is my Queen of Ruin from uh, Creature Castle. This was this was another absolutely one that was right near the top. So I had looked at this one again. Um, sure. So this is providing me a nice opportunity to give feedback to folks who who uh, didn't quite get there. So one of the this was a really nice piece, um, and I really liked it a lot. Uh, no, don't worry. My my uh, natural inclination towards not liking gross things as in no way influences my nature as a judge. I might be able to separate these things. Uh, and I think you did an absolute great job with this. This was another one that was right up at the top. That, you know, these were really hard decisions this year, I will say. Um, overall, the... So what kind of... Let me zoom in because that's really going to bring it home. Um, what sort of sunk you down was the paint wasn't resolved as smoothly as I would have wanted. So you're using like your coloration and you've got a lot of great texturing, but some of it doesn't feel as naturally organic as I would have wanted. What I mean by that is some of the weathering and things like that on the metal parts of the armor. I couldn't quite see the narrative, like there's a big slice through it, but that isn't the rusted part. It's not leaking rust. Some of this has a lot of just like specks and stipples, but they're not in places that I would expect. Rust tends to gather sort of cracks, edges, places where water gather, not just sitting open on top of the flat surface on top. Um, the things like the red of the tongue in the front were not resolved as cleanly. Like I can really see a lot of harsh, uh, not blends here and stuff like that. Like things are pretty rough, pretty, um, unrefined. And I think that really held you back. You clearly have a great eye for composition. The addition of all this like sort of skin texturing stuff was, was, uh, really nice. Um, the lighting scheme that you were going for, like I understand it, but I'm not sure it really sold like this. This turquoise light was being cast in here, which I got, and then you're sort of resolving a, a turquoise light here, but I couldn't tell what was casting it because nothing else over here is lit in that same light. And things like the ropes and this kind of stuff don't really have it. And those felt kind of flat as well at the same time. There was a lot, it was more like the little details of it didn't feel as finished and polished as the other pieces. When I look at things like this horn resolution, right, this is really rough in here. That kind of stuff is what I thought held you back from, you know, being in, in, a, in a top spot. All right. So there you go, Sebastian. Hope that helps. Okay, next up, Nicholas. Uh, oh, wait, absolutely has flesh. That's what that is. Things you like input on composition, freehand on scales, gold, true metallic metal. Yeah, sure. So the gold looks really nice. You've done a good job of capturing, especially on these areas. The, the, the top part's still a little flat. We could use a little more variation here in these top ones, but I really like what you did with the uh, the lower part of the machine here. Uh, there's a really nice shadows. You've taken control of the light, good stuff. Now, freehand on the scales, 
no problem with it. It sells for me. Lots of just little stipples in a pattern. Yes, fine. With the, the, the circle ones. The line ones don't sell as much for me because you don't have enough lines. If you're going to do that, that scratchy hashy thing, which is cool, no issue, you got to do more of them. Okay, so sell me with more of that. Uh, and then what was the other thing? I'm sorry, the gold, the pattern, the scales, and oh, overall composition. Overall composition is great. Love the skin of the Skinky Doos being kind of a very nice neutral light color. Um, the green of their scales being the same as the green of the gem. The, the green gems work for me. I have no problem with that. You know, green, blue, and purple. It's a great combination together. It's three great tastes that go great together. So overall compositionally, wonderful work. I don't, I, and like, I love that you managed to use the two purples in interesting ways here. Sort of, so you've got kind of a uh, more violet and uh, traditional sort of magenta purple. So that's great. Um, th that all looks nice. So there you go, Nicholas. Hope that helps. Really nice. Keep pushing it on the flat areas with that, that managing, you know, create area planes where the, the light is planing across it. So areas of reflection where it's brighter and areas of shadow. And so with the, that's what you got to do with those flat surfaces. Amy, general feedback on the Bellacore and especially the color scheme anywhere you can improve. Well, you definitely made it more interesting than the base uh, Bellacore. So well done there. Really like the wings. The resolved texture is very interesting. So that's exciting. I don't love the red that you made the rune in the center of his chest. That that's compositionally challenging. Um, I would have rather made that the blue. This red is resolving in balance with the wings. There's your color triangle. This blue is this is often the problem with Bellacore. He's really poorly balanced. What I would honestly do is go blue, blue, and then put blue magic hidden under his hand. So that way you create another light line across there. And that helps balance that out. Um, but overall, the biggest problem I see, I notice with him is with his chest and the sort of muscle structure. You resolved some decent uh, volumetric highlights with some of the other areas of the muscles, like down here. But his chest just feels so broad and flat and, and, and uh, lacking in contrast. So I, I need to see a lot more like a contrast of value and hue there at the chest level. That's the part that really jumped out at me as being kind of flat and needing some love. Really like the variation on the sword. That looks good. They're like blue to purple and then back up to blue again. That that sold for me, so I, I had no issue there. Um, overall, very cool piece. I think that the challenge is the center of the piece is really kind of boring. I would turn that chaos star blue and then create a lot more like value and hue variation on the chest. All right, next up, David. Uh, all right. Uh, third ever monster, a coalesce stegodon from Shyish. Uh, to a decent tabletop standard. Love feedback on textures, contrast of color, and light and general light placement. So I just wanted to say, first off, I know you didn't ask for it, but I really did like the base on this one. He looks he looks great. Um, I love this base you created. It's really fun and interesting. Um, general contrast, yeah, you said, so this is going for a tabletop standard, which I think you absolutely achieved. Um, the general composition is interesting because you kept the orange and stuff up top. You really are kind of in a riot of color mode here, but it works out okay because it's relatively balanced. Your yellows and oranges tend to be along this plane. Your blues and greens tend to be along here. Turning the ground purple was a master stroke. I don't know if you did that intentionally to color balance it, but it was a very strong choice because then it takes the purples of the skinky doos and it creates a nice sandwich effectively of the bright blue, which is very eye catching. Um, so that looks really good. Um, the green then kind of bounces out through lots of little pops across it, acting as a pop color through the triangles, the scales, and then these little, whatever they are, balls up here. And this is a great example. You're trying to find another place to hide a color. He just decided these things are green. Great. Perfect. Like, that's exactly it. You can just, you get to decide things are colors, and, and you should... Like, that should be the primary motivation is when you're trying to balance a piece. Something like, oh, but it looks like a metal texture, so I have to paint it metal. You don't have to paint it metal. Make it a color. Go for it. Shields look really nice. Those have fantastic contrast. I noticed the shields from a mile away. Thought those worked really, really well. Um, great stuff. Uh, I don't know if you were inspired by maybe, like, the Goobertown Hobbies video for that or whatever. But uh, but I think he did. that's one of my favorite videos from Goobs because he really shows the, how these shields can be such a great learning tool. And I think he really brought that into life. The horns could maybe use a little more variation. Those kind of jumped out at me. You know, even if it was just a couple soft washes of Agrax, like really like glazed on, not washed on, sort of drawn toward the the base of the horn, I think that could go a long way. But overall, this thing, this guy looks really, really cool. Very well done. I think he's great. He's definitely above tabletop. 
All right, next up, Carlos uh, Manticore from Mirs Miniatures. How to make brown not boring um, and the interesting insect looking parts. He is quite boring. So, uh, yeah, I mean, and I don't mean that offensively. I mean, you said it, you were right. Uh, the, the issue here with often with things like Chimera is they're very distinct. They have these weird different parts. Um, I mean, the key with brown is you don't paint brown. So I have a video on uh, leather. If you go watch that, I talk about how we're going to paint all in leathers. Um, but I'm going to use all variations of brown, and we do that by working in color. At the same time, we have to bring out the various pieces, and the piece really lacks contrast. You're right that you said that maybe the wings should have been a different color. Yes, you're right. I mean, you knew all the right things to do here, right? He feels very universally highlighted in the way that he's dry brushed and stuff like that, when really what we want to do is we want to create those volumetric highlights in the muscle structure. His mane could be a brighter, different color that helps him to set apart. His face needs more value, contrast, more, more variation of value and hue. Um, the wings absolutely need to be a different color to create a striking frame for him. As to the insect parts, you you know you can have them blend in. They don't need to be so shockingly different, but you don't want to unbalance it from the rest of the piece. And one of the ways you can do that is by integrating those colors into everything else. So whatever you're going to use for the insect parts, make also other bones or horns or nails those same colors. That way it feels like there's a, a harmony there of what's going on. Okay? All right. Okay. All right, so let's keep going. All right, next up, Mike Smith. Uh, Blood Maw from Mirrors Miniatures. Uh, the sculpt is so detailed with deep cracks, I found it hard to know how to approach. In the end, most of the skin is dry brush, lots of watches, and then some highlights painted on. Uh, sure. Uh, okay. Sure. So, yeah, this guy's a real big dude. And, and again, the, the, the trick with these kinds of pieces, and, and you did a nice job with it, but the trick with these kinds of pieces is you have to work from the, work from the macro to the micro. So what I mean by that is we start with the whole piece. Let's, let's start over here. We have to think about the whole piece and the top being in light and the bottom being in shadow, right? Or something like that. Like the, this, this area at the top, the top area is gonna be brighter than the bottom. That sets our sort of base tones. Now, I think you did a really nice job with like the spittle and the blood effects and the interesting color variation throughout there. Then you work into the micro as you start to pick out in the highlight areas, you pick out more of those little textures. Overall, I think you did a nice job um, getting at those. The problem is with things like just washes and dry brushes, that's fine. You can go that direction, but then you need to have make sure you're dry brushing in an in a intentional way where you're, you're like suddenly we're using smaller and smaller dry brushes and just hitting the tops of muscles instead of the whole thing. Right. And then you can resolve that value contrast up. And that's sort of the number one thing that jumps out at me is I need a little more of that value contrast. I'd also love to see you vary your washes on things like the skin a little more or the colors you're working in. Um, again, this is a guy that could have benefited from maybe some purples or very deep reds into the lower parts where his skin is stretched and stuff like that to make it feel like there's a little more life underneath that gray skin. So I hope that helps, Mike. Okay. Next up, Joseph Phillips, work in progress. I appreciate your input. All right, Joe, I'll do it this time, but so you know, for the future, these are for finished works. Finished only. Uh, seen your video on faces recently, but I'm struggling with this one. Is there anything you'd suggest? So it's an interesting conversion for this big giant monster. Um, you know, one of the things I, I noticed is that again, much like I've talked about, our contrast is quite universal. It's very obvious with the fur. So we need to respect the volumetric highlighting more like the top of the fur would be brighter than the bottom of the fur, you know, that kind of thing. When we come around to the, the skin, sure, he's got like this dude has a very derpy sort of ugly face, but the same sorts of rules apply, right? Here we need to work in more color. And, and life to him. He's not a great example of it because his face is so all over the place, but he's still gonna have a lit T-zone. He's still gonna have redness to his cheeks. He's still gonna have defined lips. Um, you know, things like that can go a long way toward um, bringing out that kind of texture or, or bringing out that kind of, I'm sorry, that kind of like those, the, what do I wanna say? To resolving how you read the face, okay? So like this plane of light should still be brighter up here with the brightest resolving here. Um, the lips are probably a little too bright. They need to come down a little and then also have like more red tones here into his cheeks on the side. Like you're getting caught up on the micro texture. Think of it like one smooth surface, 
right? Where is the light falling? And then again, you work from the macro into the micro, okay? And that's how you that's how you kind of help that resolve. So I hope that helps there, Joe. All right, Christian Smith, uh, Archeon, uh, centerpiece for my first 12 months of journey. Look for general feedback, especially on color composition, high-end tabletop. Uh, sure, yes, he is definitely too large for any light box. Overall, he looks cool. For, so to tackle a big piece like this a year in, he looks really nice. Um, you know, what sort of, what, what kind of could use more attention? Again, it's going to be a lot of the same things that we're, we're dealing with here. Yeah, very reasonable uh, overall light setup there. That's that's quite funny. Um, so, like, one of the things that I would say, here, let's zoom in on him here so we can. Um, things like variation in the wings, it, you know, like, again, it's the usual story of a little more tonal variation throughout the piece. I think this is well done. I like the, your variation of hue. Um, you did a nice job of working like color, the you know, purple into the claws. You've got some blues into the, the skin. It's not all just resolved in black. You did a great job of creating variation of hue there. So I think you've taken that lesson on strongly. Now we've still got to resolve those value variations of the individual muscle clusters and things like the wings are a big place you can express that because as he's lifted up like this, the these tops areas of the wings that are in, you know, on each striation is going to be very much in deeper shadow and you're getting part of that for free because it's sort of the cast light. But I can tell where the light is shining here like this side, it looks like, oh, this is really dark. But that's because he's turned away from the way your light was in the picture. Whereas over here, I can see that it's not there. So again, bringing those shadows to life and, and putting them up there is really one of those things that's um, that can make a big difference. So uh, overall, super cool. I hope he goes forth and, and brings the apocalypse. Uh, Lol, Lolal. Okay. Repainted this B here three times. The last time was mostly with metal colors. Best time so far. I'm still not satisfied. I'm struggling really hard with color composition here. Especially the base is driving me nuts. No color seems to fit. So I've right with this grayish dark with some dry brush, dark sand highlights. Yeah, so it's kind of tough. The picture's very bright. I mean, this kind of thing is a really hard thing to paint. My honest answer, Lolal, is pick a different fig and move on with your life. It's not a very good fig. Like, it's badly sculpted and the texture's really shallow and it's just not going to take detail well. Like, you'd have to do so much work to bring this, to bring any quality to this sort of thing the sculpt is letting you down like what you're trying to resolve ground texture that's effectively just a, there was a clump of clay that somebody just stabbed a whole bunch it's not anything right so it's it that's why it doesn't look good with anything because it isn't anything like the sculptor didn't put any effort into it for the ground you shouldn't either um like i'm not trying to rag on whoever sculpted this but like these are the kind of things that drive me crazy when i see scales like this and stuff like this like it's 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 just not worth your time okay the, a bee here is such a cool monster and, like, I really love this monster from D&D. I mean, I've played D&D for 32 years. I've fought my share of v here's And, you know, this is not what I pictured in my head. And that's not because of your paint job at all. I'm not making any judgment on that. You know, what you'd want to work on is, you know, resolution of these details. But the thing is, I'd say, okay, well, you know, apply a wash to the whole body but this texture is so shallow it's barely going to take the wash right so you have to actually go in and manually hand paint every single scale the the muscle structure needs better defining but the muscles are so soft and ill-defined you're going to have to reconstruct what the muscles should be and should look like sometimes it's just best to say no to a figure i i know we really get like something but crisp detail is i am a miniature elitist absolutely in a thousand percent if a miniature company can't make a, a miniature that has a crisp detail i don't want to paint it they didn't feel it was worth it to invest time and resources into making something of high value i don't feel like it's time it's worth my time to paint it so there we go and plus there's got to be other people out there who have be here's i bet <laughs> so um you know like i bet if we hit up like mini factory uh my mini factory i'm sure that people have be here's or something similar you could just you know you, and even if you don't have a 3D printer, you can actually just buy and have them print it and send it to you. So check that out. All right, Joel, uh, who was a day late. It's not really acceptable, but I'll let it go this time. Uh, diorama featuring a Trogoth and four small snotlings. First time painting a big monster. Uh, sure. So 
compositionally, it, the, the snarlings are super fun, by the way. I, I like the overall composition of, of the thing. It's too big as a diorama. Like, you need to shrink it way down, um, even smaller. Uh, like, it should be them very much tight around this big giant thing. Love the very pastel, bright blue colors. Like, the, the colors on this are fantastic. I really, it's super eye-catching to me, and I love it. Um, this cannon feels very out of place because you, you resolved this cannon like you probably deployed your normal techniques of, like, rusty metal. And then, but it just feels so weathered and realistic compared to everything else, which he feels like he walked out of an 80s cartoon. Like, he jumped off the front of a cereal box. And so, like, I think you could have popped the, the rust on this, like, way up, made it bright and sort of overdone. Um, the skin is good. The normal the normal rules I've said many times here apply. There's not enough contrast of value or hue. So more tones, reds, uh, purples, and things worked into the skin, bringing in more naturalistic shadows to the much muscle structures. Things like that are the main areas you need help with. The one thing I don't think is um, we, we, we have, you have great you have great use with the textures. Uh, between the mushrooms on the top and things like that, you really did a really nice job of bringing out the individual textures of this guy. So that's a that's an A plus for you right there. The from the nose and the it, these mushroom striations up here and stuff like that. You did a, the the wood grain, these little the sort of miniature micro cracks in his skin. Yeah, you did a great job picking all those out. That I really really love. Compositionally strong. Uh, all that really just value contrast is probably the biggest area I noticed. Okay, and then last up. Uh, William Thompson. Okay. Uh, so main focus was the face and the skin. Uh, all right. So, sure. Same thing I had said before on painting busts. We just didn't go far enough here. More microtexturing damage, chips, things like that into stuff like the horns, bringing those to life. Um, the face and the muscle structure need more individual uh, kind of attention and value if we zoom in here. I like the dark circles under the eyes, but we can resolve more of it more color into the cheeks. Um, the the wrinkle transitions are actually too strong right here on the front of him. Like those those wrinkles would be a million miles deep. Like they're too strong. So you've got to watch to, to not overemphasize certain values. You'd like you need to soften it here and deepen the shadows here. Okay. Um, so you really have to control the light. And then finally the hair um, I, again, we've done some work, but we need to do more to pick out those individual textures, the clumping, the striations that are going to be there to create those individual shadows. The place where he did it the best is right here on his beard. Um, that looks really nice. I, I wish everything else kind of felt and looked like that because that I think you nailed. I just wish the rest of the hair had that same level of detail and attention. So there you go, William. So that brings us to the end of the month. Uh, next month. Uh, which is August, the month we're currently in, is units. So uh, we'll take a look at those then. For all of you who submitted, uh, thank you so much. Remember, if you want to submit uh, your own work, if you want to join us here in the PMP, uh, you can do so. The link is down in the description. Uh, this community, I, I, I founded it to be a positive place where painters reached out and helped each other. We all have to recognize that no matter where we are on this journey, Somebody at some point returned around and gave a hand back to pull us forward, and now hopefully we'll turn around and give a hand back to someone else. So we always lift up, we never push down, we always uh, build, never destroy, and we always support, never attack. So stay positive, stay hobbying, uh, and as always, we'll see you next time.